Let's have a look at how we can program drum patterns in the step sequencer and then we'll examine a few tricks that we can do uh, with effects. First of all, I'm going to press group and browse and I'm going to browse for an analog 808 style drum kit. So let's load the 808 kit. So let's uh, press the step button, um, pick the kit piece that we want, now press the step button. Uh, now I'm going to just do some four and floor techno. So we change our, our tempo uh, using the tempo knob, so it's about 128 bars or beats per minute. And um, I'm just going to put in uh, some steps here. So you can see there are two bars on the right hand display. Uh, we're now showing the first bar, so you can see the LEDs are showing what steps are being played, and the second bar. So I'm going to now put in some half accented steps or half velocity steps if you like. So above this uh, left hand display there's a button called half velocity, I suggest pressing that. Uh, and now I'm going to put in some half steps. I'm going to flick back to uh, real time mode temporarily and pick another piece of the kit. So this is a snare drum. I'm going to move back to step time record and now I'm going to uh, do some just basic techno beats. Okay, excellent. I'm going to use this, a half velocity function here to add some ghosted notes. Okay, now step recording and uh, real time recording don't necessarily need to be ex mutually exclusive um, processes. You can combine and mix and match the best of both, both sequencing methods. So I'm going to drop back into real time mode and I'm going to use this uh, note repeat function to lay down some hi hats. Uh, so now um, I'm going to show you a trick with the distortion which uh, you might not have thought of using before. So uh, let's go back to real time mode. Uh, now I'm going to place a distortion effect over the group bus that's uh, got the 808 drum kit coming through. So to, to do this is very simple. Just press the group button. Now because I want to load a distortion rather than a preset of distortion, I'm going to load the module. So pressing shift and browse will load modules. So I'm now going to navigate to internal and on the right hand side uh, we get a list of uh, the effects that the machine comes with. So these are all designed to be uh, you know, editable in real time and uh, ideal for performance. So you'll see this shortly with the distortion. So we now can see the distortion module is loaded and if we hit playback you'll hear the characteristic change in sound. Now. Let's crank things up a level. We'll get things sounding very dirty very quickly. I'm going to add some more hi hats in to make my pattern a bit more how I'd like it to be. So there's a parameter here called release. Uh, this is a really good one to tweak <coughs> in this context. Let's have a look at what happens. Now another parameter that's quite unique on this distortion is the uh, gate parameter. So I'm going to suggest that you turn off the gate. And this will give you an idea for a really cool performance trick. Okay, now I'm going to turn the sequencer off.
So at this point, you're playing at the venue, and the uh, venue owner is very worried about his PA system. <coughs> Indeed, he should be. So that sounds rather savage. Let's um, clean things up a bit with a low pass filter with an LFO attached to it. So in the second module slot, I'm now going to load the filter. So pressing and holding shift and browse, I'll navigate through for machines in built filter. So let's um, apply a modulation amount for this and then make it an LFO synced. Sync to LFO or sync to the master clock. We'll pick 16ths or 8ths. So bandpass filter, as you could hear me accidentally invoke there. You can change the LFO shape. So while well, you can see me having a lot of fun here with um, tweaking all these parameters on the encoders, <clears throat> it's probably struck you that um, it would be a lot of fun to record all these knob movements. So this gives me a good opportunity to introduce how easy it is to record automation on machine. So uh, there's a button on machine called Auto Write. If you actually have a, a recent model machine, it'll be called Auto Write. If you're lucky enough to adopt machine very early in its life, it'll be called F2. So basically, NI have actually changed the silk screen for machine. Let's now press and hold Auto Write and tweak some of the parameters. Let's play with some of the parameters on the distortion. If you don't like your parameter tweaks, you can clear them very simply using the shift and the clear automation function. Let's have another go. Okay. <clears throat> 